Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Frankenstein by Yuta Berlinger, and it is by Invaders. In the game Frankenstein, you're basically going to be doing a little bit of bidding and a little bit of auctioning, where you're basically going to be trying to gather eight specific parts for your monster. Now, of course, there's going to be other mad scientists out there that are attempting to gather parts of their monster as well and of course what you want to do before them is create your monster now you have to have one of each part and having extras will make you have to remove them to make sure that you only have what is necessary because you won't need an extra leg for the monster if you've already got to but you also have to be wary of certain events like storms and other things that pop out during the game as well as of course riots or townsfolk with pitchforks that are out there trying to stop you from creating your ultimate creation gather all the parts you need before anybody else and reveal of the monstrosity that you've created sounding it's alive and win the game Frankenstein all right let's go ahead and take a look at all the components you get and uh, then I'll explain how to play the game so here we have the game Frankenstein and everything included except they only gave me one of these screens so Grant and I went ahead and made our own little cardboard stands that we can hide our stuff behind because you're gonna be needing these screens to hide your monster parts because no one's supposed to know what monster parts you gather other than what they see you gather from the middle of the board. Now in the game you're also gonna get one of these player boards here that will have all eight of the monster parts whether they be they limbs of some type, they be the torso, they be the head, they be the brain or the heart. You're going to be basically getting gathering all the cards you possibly can and from where? Well from the parts deck I should say but not only that there's also some other cards like these guys wielding pitchforks those guys can pop out throughout the game you're gonna start off with a certain amount of currency as well which are these little tokens here whether they be one or three and you're gonna have three options or four options on your turn the first thing you can do is simply buy out the card outright and there's going to be a symbol on the card uh, the top left hand corner where it says okay it's five you just buy it outright and keep it uh, there's also the bottom right which is going to tell you um, how much you can try and start uh, just simply sell it for and put it in front of you and then there's the amount of money or currency it'll cost you to buy in front of your discard pile or somebody else's discard pile you can choose to do any of those actions or you could go ahead and uh, simply uh, buy you can buy anybody's stuff outside there now there's also events that are going to occur that are going to make you lose money or gain money just depending on what they are and then they might give you an extra turn after that and they might not it just depends on the events i only have the pitchforks in here the ones that are unique are coming to the kickstarter which you probably see on the kickstarter page if you'd like but for the most part you're going to be choosing to flip over cards and auction or buy them players are going to have the option to buy them off of you if they don't you have to pay the original auction price which could be at least cheaper than the cost itself or of course if you don't want anybody to have that card you can go ahead and sell it and gather the money that's how you're going to be mainly gaining money in this game if no one buys from you utilizing the cards to make the best monster you possibly can and junking all the duplicate pieces will guarantee you that you're winning the game now of course if somebody else does it before you you're out of luck so the best builder of monsters in the game Frankenstein is going to win the game. Everything you see here included along with some other cool stuff on the campaign. All right, let me show you how to play. So here we have Frankenstein, the board game and everything included. Uh, as you can see, I went ahead and set up for three players. Uh, there's you, then there's the two other players uh, that are using my beautiful cardboard cutouts. A uh, cute little guy here, no monsters here, not an evil mansion. All right, so everybody's going to get 12 currency to start. You're just gonna take two, three threes and three ones and place them behind your board, illustrating that everyone starts the same amount, but you're never gonna know what everybody else is gonna have because it's all hidden. Have a pool of tokens that will be set aside as well, and then go ahead and shuffle the deck of cards. After that, choose a player. We'll go ahead and start with us first, drawing a card from the top here, and, uh, oops, sorry, only one. And then you're going to look at it. Now, as you can see here, there's going to be a uh, three, and there's going to be a one over here and a four. The three is how much it costs to simply buy it outright. The one is how much it costs, or how much you're gonna get if you sell it. And whenever you sell a card, you're gonna put it in front of your screen so other players or yourself can purchase it at a later date. And the four is how much it's going to cost if you wanna buy that card at a later date. You can only purchase cards on the top of the stack of discarded cards in each player's uh, front of their screen. 
This is, of course, an arm or a leg, and you're going to be able to purchase it for three if you want. Now, it's not the greatest of pieces, so if you don't want to purchase it for simply spending three, you can choose to auction it off. Auctioning, you can start at any bid you want, but remember, you probably always want to start it off uh, higher than this number here, because that's the number you could get if you simply sold it. So I could say two. And after this player says two, this player over here can say three, and this player over here can say four. You're only going to get one chance to bid around the circle, so it won't go three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's just going to simply be the highest bidder at the end of the round gets it. So if he bids two, he bids three, and he passes, he's going to get it for three. He will not have a chance to rebid. Same with it would go if he said two, three, and four. This player would simply get it because he bid the most out of everybody having an opportunity to bid. If you did uh, auction it off, let's say, and he went, you said two, he passed, and he said three, this player would get that limb. You'd place it in the spot that it corresponds to, and then he's going to give you currency based on what he bid for. So in this case, three. After that, your turn would be done, and the next player would get a chance to go, flipping over a new card, and this card is a brain. It's going to cost six to purchase. It's got three if he just simply were to sell it, and nine if somebody wanted to buy it in front of his screen. He'll simply go ahead and straight up sell this card, so place it in front of his board here, taking three currency and putting it behind his board. The next player will get a chance to go now, flipping over a card, and we got a foot here. This is going to cost you five if you want to buy it outright, two for the selling, and seven for purchasing it in front. He will start the bidding off, let's say, at three, right? Because he wants more, make more money. Now, nobody has this card, so probably a good one to purchase, so he'd say three, and maybe he says four, in which case that would end the bidding round. He would take the foot, placing it down, and he would then give four to the player that uh, was selling the product. Now we're back to your turn again. What do we have here? Oh no, pitchforks. This one's going to make you spend four. You could spend it collectively uh, from your pool, or you could sell one of your cards. So for instance, if you have this little this little brain card, you could get spend, this is gonna have a value of six. So you can simply discard this card for the six value, thusly removing this guy. You don't get any change though if you do. Or if let's say this said two, you would spend, you would sacrifice this one and two more, and that would also get rid of the pitch fork. And finally, you could just simply spend four just in currency to get rid of it as well. But after you get rid of it in some way, shape, or form, this is going to get removed from the game, and then you're going to simply flip over another card, and it's still your turn. Now we've got a heart here, and if he wants, he can simply spend his six currency to the bank, and he takes the heart and he places it on the heart space. And the game's gonna keep going on like that until somebody acquires all eight pieces. Uh, you got your arm and your leg and your hand and your foot, your uh, brain and your heart and your body and your head. And if you can get all that, you win. Now, remember, if you get two of the same piece, you're going to need to get rid of those by either spending them via these town pitchforks or discarding them along with some money in order to pick up these cards here. You're always going, whenever you want to go ahead and purchase one of these, so let's go ahead and say it was your turn again for some reason, uh, you could go ahead and spend nine for this. Or if you wanted, you could spend six from this card here, discarding this card, um, and then you can go ahead and spend an extra three, thusly allowing you to pick up the brain card and placing it in its space. And that's pretty much how you play the game Frankenstein. Oh god, I put it in the right spot. And uh, that's how you win the game as well. Now, there's a couple other additional cards that'll be coming in the game, but for the most part, this is what I have right now, so this is what I'm going to talk about. Let's come up, and I'll give you my review. And that's how you play the game Frankenstein. It's a bidding slash auction style game, gathering the eight pieces, Eureka, I've done it, or it's alive and you win the game. And it is fairly simple, right? You're basically just drawing one of the cards and doing one of your actions or passing it along and uh, making sure the players do not get the pieces that you uh, don't want them to have. Now you have to remember what pieces they have and what pieces you need, so, Basically, there's a little bit of strategy as far as how that works, but the main aspect is gathering money in auctions. That's a really important aspect in this game because being poor is going to net your opponents a lot of free pieces. So you have to be very careful with that. I have one little caveat I have for the game, and that would be when you defeat a villager, if they don't defeat you, if they defeat you, they get discarded and get removed. If you defeat them, they actually go to your hand and they become a currency of four, which you can go ahead and utilize to buy stuff in front of other players' boards, which is a kind of little neat thing. And additionally, there's a lot of extra cards that I read up uh, that you should check on the Kickstarter as to what they do. There's different types of things that can help you, whether they be like patrons or whether they be storms and whatnot, things that are going to pop up in the game uh, that I didn't have in here that I didn't play with. But uh, based on how they're played, it seems kind of cool. It's just additional events that are going to happen that will still give you your turn, but you also have something unique happen. And I like unique things happening from time to time in a game. That being said, 
this game is a lot of fun. If you enjoy a very simplistic auction game with a lot of complex strategy as to when you want to bid and how you want to bid, you're going to like this. The interesting mechanic in this game is it doesn't keep going around the table. You could bid two and then you're going to see a three, four, maybe a five bid and that five is done. No more. If you pass once, that's your only opportunity to bid. So the bidding phase is rather quick, which makes the game rather speedy. After playing the game simply the first time, we were like, all right, let's play again. It was quick, really easy. I'm down to play it again. I want to learn more. And you develop complex strategies as you're playing the game. You can say, oh, I only need one brain, but I know that Grant's going to get another brain and win the game. So I'm going to pick that up from him, knowing that I'm going to have the final bid, screwing him over. However, now I'm stuck with this card and I can't win the game with two brains. So I'm going to have to find a unique strategy as to get rid of cards. So one of my critiques would be, it's kind of irritating if you don't grasp this little special technique, and I'll tell you how it works right now. When you got two brains, and let's say you've got like a wild card and a, and, a, and a foot, and you need a leg piece, you can go ahead and sell that brain and sell that uh, foot, and then you can get a chest. Then you can move your wild off of the chest, put it on your foot, and get a new chest, thusly removing your bonus card. Now, that sounds a little complex, but when you get the game, you'll understand what I mean. It'll make sense to you. A little bonus just for you, though, so you don't feel like you're kind of stuck waiting for villagers to pillage you. You can actually utilize the wild cards to your advantage. And if you don't want to deal with that at all, I would simply suggest not trying to purchase duplicates. But that gets rid of the hate drafting in the game or hate auctioning in the game, which is very relevant and very important. You always want to at least pick up the pieces that you know players are likely going to use to win with. But it's not always necessary. The game has a pretty... Uh, the, the the other part is the ending. Like, you never know who's going to win at what point, so it's always kind of a bam, I win. So that can come off flat sometimes, and that can come off as really, really like, oh, wow, that's really cool. I did not expect that to happen. And usually the game is going to be rather close, like down to the wire. Players are going to simply be like, I'm only one or two pieces away, or simply... Uh, maybe three pieces away, but it's very likely you guys are very close because the currency is going to be flowing between every single player. Making those bonus, like, wise decisions from here and there are going to make the difference in this game. If you can gather five currents and everybody else only gets two or three, that can be the difference between winning and losing because you can pick up that one big piece that's going to save the game for you. Wilds are so great, but they're also so expensive. Sometimes you want to dump them in front of you, knowing that they're probably not going to get purchased because they're so expensive in front of you, but it also gives you a good amount of currency to place into your tableau. Pretty useful, ra rather, uh, in my opinion. And then, of course, I like the townsfolk. They just pop up on the occasion. They don't necessarily mess you up as long as you're playing conservatively. But if you're going to take that risk, it adds a little bit of luck pressing in this auction game, which is nice as well. That being said, uh, if you don't want a game that's very, like, quick, if you want a more thick and, like, involving auction game, this might not be for you. If you want something that lasts more than an hour, probably not for you as well. This is a very simple quick, straightforward game with the complex choices that you need to make uh, from turn to turn, and you're always part of the game regardless of whose turn it is. I think you're going to know whether you're going to be interested in this game just by hearing what I'm explaining and also checking out the Kickstarter. Mm, the one thing I'd probably like to see more is, of course, events and all that kind of stuff, which is going to be added to the game already, so I'm not going to give it a negative in that aspect. Overall, it's a fun little auction game, and I don't have a lot of auction games in my collection, so this is another one that's going to stick in my collection. If I get the base game because right now I'm dealing with these, <laughs> these 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 cardboard ones here and as much as I love Grant's artwork we're gonna have to wait for the uh, full copy of the game of Frankenstein a fun little auction game with a couple little twists all right guys thanks for watching another unfiltered gamer board game review if you like this video go and check out the rest of our videos you on YouTube like subscribe and comment as well as taking a look at Frankenstein the creative creation auction style game in which you're trying to make a monster along with everybody else right as well as take a look at our website unfilteredgamer.com tons of blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more we're currently giving away the game the game dogs but but not my dog just the game dogs if you want to pick that up well wow, that is such dad humor that is not funny just forget i said that also go ahead and check out our friends everythingboardgames.com the giveaway geek and Ferdinand the Cardboard Stacker. He's okay. And another shout out for Show Me How to Win. They're going to be doing uh, season two. It's coming into, into the creative process of editing, which is going to be fun to see what they do for this next season. I, I love those gals making some really, really great videos. And I'm really excited to see what they produce. And lastly, Arizona game fair we'll be going there taking a look at all the cool games and all the cool creators there happy to say that we'll be doing some live streams from there and uh, who knows what else maybe some collaborative stuff with glory hound anyway 
that's all I got for you this time, guys. And as always, I look forward to creating a monster with you next time. Master. <laughs>